Who is the woman in Revelation 12? We've already discussed the dragon and how he's Satan. When reading through Revelation 12, we see that he's pursuing a pregnant woman about to give birth to a male child. The question then follows, who is the woman and who is the child? A common answer given is that the woman is the church. However, this answer really makes little to no sense. Why? Well, because of the identity of the child. Verse 5 tells us who the child is. She was about to give birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. This is a messianic psalm from Psalm 2, which says, You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. This tells us that the child is Jesus. This is also confirmed by Revelation 19.15, which says, From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. So if the child being born by the woman is Jesus, then it makes no sense for the woman to be the church. The church did not give birth to Jesus, but it came after and through him. Revelation 12 also notes that the child was caught up into heaven, which of course is speaking of Christ's ascension. This clearly does not fit with the woman being the church. We later see the woman fleeing for three and a half years into the wilderness, and this too also doesn't fit. Another common argument against this position is that the church nowhere in scripture is called a woman, only a bride. So the woman is not the church. Some say the woman is Mary. This is slightly better and getting a little bit closer, but it's still not there. They argue that since Jesus is the child being born, then this must be Mary who literally gave birth to Jesus. Though this aspect does fit, the rest do not. Again, when did Mary flee into the wilderness three and a half years after Christ's ascension? Along with that, during this period, the dragon leaves the woman and goes to make war on her offspring. This clearly does not fit with Mary, though she did have more children. Because of this, some will then argue that Mary's offspring is the church. But that is a very weak argument. We also get the sense that there's been some sort of cosmic battle between the dragon and the woman for some time. And when I say some time, I mean since the dragon's fall. It takes you back to the Garden of Eden and the fall of Adam and Eve. Mary was not there, and so that doesn't fit with this. Additionally, Mary is never described as clothed with the sun, moon, and 12 stars. Perhaps this is the first time this is being ascribed to her, but the more likely answer is it fits with the actual identity of the woman. Who is the woman? The woman is Israel. This is the only option that fits, and when I say it fits, it fits everything. And if it fits, it's it. She's clothed with the sun, moon, and 12 stars. This is an obvious reference to Genesis 37 with Joseph's dream. In his dream, the sun, moon, and 11 stars bow down to him, the 12th star. Here in Revelation, they say 12 because they're including Joseph. Joseph's father, Jacob, being a prophet, he understands the meaning. Jacob is the sun, his wife is the moon, and the 12 stars are his 12 sons. In essence, that is Israel. So the woman being clothed in these things in Revelation is clothed in Israel. This is just using imagery to give us her identity. She is Israel. It's also important to note that frequently in the Old Testament, Israel is called a woman. She is in labor, crying out to give birth. This represents Israel crying out for their Messiah. This goes all the way back to what is known as the Proto-Evangelium, which literally means the first gospel, because it's the first reference to the gospel. This is Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Who is God talking to here in Genesis 3.15? It is the serpent, regarding both him and the woman. Who is described in Revelation 12? A woman and a great serpent. That is quite a parallel. A dragon in biblical language is more accurately identified as a large or great, even mythological, serpent-like creature. This is given even that much more weight when we see this cosmic battle between the two of them. As I said, this started at the fall, and more precisely prophesied in Genesis 3.15. God gives the promise that the Messiah would crush the serpent and the serpent's seed. Therefore, the serpent who is the dragon, wants to devour the child. Throughout history, we see Satan trying to destroy mankind, destroy Israel, destroy the Davidic line, and even destroy Jesus himself. 
He tempts Cain to kill his brother Abel. He has the sons of God marry the daughters of men in order to create this abomination which God then wipes out during the flood. He tries to have Israel destroyed by Pharaoh who very much acts like the serpent seed. He has Athalia try and destroy the Davidic line in 2 Chronicles 22. He has Herod try and destroy all the male babies so that the Messiah would be destroyed. Satan's agenda has always been to try and destroy the woman so that the child would never be born and destroy the child. Now you might be thinking, Aiden, that does fit, except Israel didn't exist until Abraham. How could Israel be the woman if this goes back to Eve? That is a great question. You also might be asking, if that's the case, shouldn't the woman be Eve? Again, another great question. However, this can't be Eve for precisely the same reasons it can't be Mary. It just doesn't fit. Why it isn't an issue to take Israel all the way back to Eve has to do with the themes of Genesis. We discussed this in our introductory lecture to our series on Genesis. A major theme of the book is tracing a particular line which becomes Israel. And think about it, the nation of Israel isn't called that until Exodus. Genesis is all about the origin of Israel and that goes all the way back to Eve. This is one of the reasons why there are so many genealogies in Genesis because it's tracing that line. So though Israel starts with Abraham, it is still deeply connected connected with Eve, and since the Abrahamic Covenant is also connected to the Proto-Evangelium in Genesis 3.15. More points to show that this is Israel? She gives birth to the Messiah. Jesus is a Jew and comes from Israel. Therefore, Israel gave birth to the Messiah. There's no problem with this in scripture. Israel was also there for his ministry and ascension. Lastly is the reference to the three and a half years. Now as has been popping up on the screen, three and a half years is the same amount of time as time times and half a time in Revelation 12, 14. It is also the same time period as 42 months and 1260 days, which is found in Revelation 12, 6. All four of these are the same length of time. The question is, when did this take place? The answer, it hasn't. Yet. This is speaking of the Great Tribulation, which is a term Jesus uses for the last three and a half years of the seven years of tribulation. This seven years is based off of Daniel's 70 weeks, each week being a period of seven years. This last week, the 70th week, hasn't happened yet. The week begins with a man making a covenant with the world, including Israel. His covenant will allow Israel to sacrifice at the temple. But three and a half years into the tribulation, the man commits the abomination that makes desolation in the temple. By doing this, he has broken his covenant with Israel and makes war with them. How much time is left of the seven years? Half. A time times and half a time, 42 months, 1260 days, it's three and a half years. This is why Jesus said, So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. What is the woman supposed to do? Flee into the wilderness for three and a half years. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God in which she is to be nursed for 1260 days. In verse 14, But the woman was given two wings of the great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for a time and times and half a time. These are all parallel passages. So sometime in the future, Israel will be pursued by Satan, but God will give her nourishment for three and a half years. If Israel is to be nourished, what does this mean? It means that all of Israel will be saved. Under the Mosaic Covenant, Israel will not have blessings, will not be nourished, unless all of Israel is obedient. So by the midpoint of the seven year tribulation, all of Israel will be saved. Paul makes reference to this in Romans 11. There are many Old Testament prophecies that make this same argument. There comes a day in the future where all of Israel will be saved. I mean, this does include though two thirds of them dying as Zechariah 13 states. 
But God uses this to purify his people. Last question, and then we're done. Who is the offspring of the woman in verse 17? Well, you we have two options, and you can take your pick. Number one, it is a reference to Israel scattered throughout the nations. Number two, it is a reference to tribulation saints. Problems with either? Well, if the offspring is Israel scattered, why is her offspring not some of her, right? If the woman is Israel, how can more of Israel not be a part of her? Is could possibly be reconciled by the fact that it's those in Judea who are commanded to flee. The ones who are scattered generally won't flee to these mountains, to this wilderness, because, well, they're very far away. Another way you might try and reconcile this is to say that not all of Israel is Israel, as Paul states. This doesn't work well, though, because it has the implications that all of those who are Israelites in the nations will then die. This can't be the case, though, because numerous times God has prophetically said that he will gather Israel from all the nations. It's kind of hard to gather Israel from all the nations if they are all dead. Therefore, I think the second option is better. Her offspring are tribulation saints. Why this one? Well, the text tells us. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Right there, it says that her offspring are believers. We know from Revelation 7 that a multitude of Gentiles will come to faith during the tribulation. This is a reference to them. It may also include those of Israel scattered in the nations, but it really doesn't have to. I will say, though, that it does not include the church because at this point, we have already been raptured. And on that note, again, this is speaking of a future event. So, to recap, the woman is Israel, the child is Jesus, and the dragon is Satan. Next time, we're going to be looking at the identification of the beast in Revelation 13. And let me tell you, there's a lot to this one, but it does give us a very clear answer. It's a fascinating topic. I know you're not going to want to miss it. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and that you have the notification bell turned on. That is all for today. So until next time, remember to know the word, do the word, and share the word. But as always, we do it in love.